Hello there everyone, it's the Demon Overlord, and today I'm doing a painting progress video. So this is going to be a video about things I've been recently painting. So first up, we're going to go with some of the new wave miniatures, which we actually have the Giant Eagle. This is my own personal paint job take on the Giant Eagle. Came some nice uh, yellow talons, nice yellow beak, some yellow eyes. I gave him some nice uh, red tinted wings just for the heck of it, a nice tail that's red tinted. Kind of a little bit like an inspiration from the Red Tail Hawk. But I was like, you know what? I liked it for that style. Give him a nice simple thing. Um, on top of that, we actually have the new Clockwork Dragon. And this is a huge class dragon, which is really awesome. I know it's from the Pathfinders version, but it'll make great use for D&D. as a nice uh, mechanical construct dragon. I used a lot of rough iron, which I really have grown to love this rough iron look. From Army Painter. Looks really nice. And then I use a nice uh, skin with a toning on there to make this nice sort of grungy looking fabric for the wings. Really awesome. I use some gold filigree, gold for the head and the filigree and such. And uh, I think it came out really good. Um, another one we got here is actually one of the new dragons. The White Dragon. Really awesome here. I really love this dragon's uh, designs. Gave him some blue with white pupil eyes. A little bit of some tone on him so that way he wasn't just flat matte white. On the ice there, we did some bluish, like, you know, blue ice. He find underneath white ice and snow. Thought he came out really great. Love this dragon. Um, definitely great because I actually don't have any adult white dragons. And as you can see, with him being huge, we have a nice adult white dragon they're using. Yes, I know they're sad they're young. But like I said in other earlier unboxing or painting videos, I'm going to consider them an adult because they have an adult sculpt to them. So, in my opinion, WizKids kind of messed up in calling that. I should have said adult dragons. Um, next up, we actually have a another one, the Wyvern. Now, normally I didn't think I was actually going to need this bad boy because, you know, he's just a Wyvern and they might not be the most common thing. But then I looked at comparing to the old D&D Wyvern. As you can see, it is a like whole... Multiple fractions smaller there, and I like how this guy, this new wyvern, is so much bigger. Like my wing, D I try to keep pretty close to the similar style, but I did make some small changes, you know, just for the look of them. I mean, obviously they are based on a similar model design, but I like this one a lot more. It's more expressive, so definitely better. And here's a quick comparison to the Pathfinder's wyvern. A little bit more in its league, but, you know, still, this one's still bigger, which I just love the size of the wyvern. Really looks like an actual creature that could be a good mount in the game. Next up, we're going to get with some of the smaller guys because we're doing that wave. Uh, we have a Tybaxi female. Let's see if I can get this in here. There we go. Nice, uh, just yellow cat. I just gave her a simple yellow cat design. Thought it was a nice ideal. Um, next up here, we if I can get one of them. There it is. We have one of the new turtles. I made him just a simple green old male turtle with some uh, green druidic flame. Give him a nice little uh, jug here for drinking. I think he'd be a good monk character, in my opinion. I don't know if that's what he's supposed to be. I think he's supposed to be something else, but I think he'd be a, a great monk for someone to use in game. Or just whatever. Uh, next up, we have another of the critters from the series. We have the polar bear. This was actually used in one of our more recent episodes of our podcast for the Dice and Dummies. So check us out. We did actually fight a couple polar bears, so he came in handy. Uh, they were kind of no match for our group, though, because uh, my barbarian character, Bardis, kind of quickly turned that polar bear into two pieces of polar bear. Um, another one we have is another turtle. There we go. Another quick little turtle here. I like how I, I made a little darker flame to it because, you know, this is like more of a wizard turtle, just a little bit darker. I like the, the these, these just big sticks for their weapons. Really nice. Um, next up, I'm actually going to use the two little guys from this set. We actually have the twin little gazers here. They actually come with a larger mini, though, which is medium class. And it is this guy here that I personally myself. Spectator. Made the eye and all that myself. Uh... Should have probably cleaned the eye a little bit more, but I love this grungy look he has to him. It gives him that nice, I've been here for a, set, a few decades look, watching over your treasure. Really like how he came out. I actually like the spectator sculpt a little bit more than I like the D&Ds. 
I feel like you can get more variety of look to it that looks more original. Um, let me see here. Get this quick zoom in on the majority. There we are. I think that might be it. For, uh, we only have a few of the wave left. But let's get this one. Uh, we have another Tybaxi. This is the second of the Tybaxi Rogues. I made her like a little nighttime purple. I actually filed the books purple on this one for detail. Gave her like one metal guard, everything else leather, because I feel she needs to be quickly mobile for being a rogue. Nice little simple brown tail with her. And, oh, okay, Get these guys quick. Um, next up, we actually have the shark. As you can see, this one I kind of went with the simplistic great white style. Um, I actually made them still removable because you could always use them as like a dead shark on a beach like this. Like just set them like that on the beach. And you'd be a good dead shark. And you can use this as like an elemental fill-in. for Like a water elemental. But really cool. I really like how my great white came out here. But I actually happened to pick up more than one of those sharks. So there's actually going to be a second one of that model, which we have right here. I kind of made this one a little bit more of a greener shark. Like more like maybe you'd find the shark inland. There's some like lighter greening in there, you can see. Get the camera. There you go. You can see a little bit of lighter greening. I got some black tipping on the fins there. I just gave him purple underbelly for giggles and then a nice green mouth just to give him something different. Made him more like maybe a summon shark or something. But yeah, another good shark. Uh, and on top of that, we have the new Boulet. And I went with an older style of design that I looked up. Um, one of the older minis I was looking at for older Boulet models actually had a bronze armor look to it. So I kind of decided to go with that. And here it is compared to the newest Boulet from the Monster Menagerie. I think it's Monster Menagerie 2. But yeah, as you can see, my Boulet works just as good. I like that it has a bronze. That way you have some different color orientation on the board. So it'll be like, I attack the lighter, the more bronze color. I attack the bronze colored one instead of the silvered. So really cool. I mean, besides, I don't see any reason why Boulets can't come in different colors. Especially if that Boulet's out in the desert, maybe it'd be a good variation of color for it. Um, another one of the new series I did was the Octopus, or the Giant Octopus. Get me some zoom here. There we are. And some nice little colors there. Now, as you can see, he's just a very dark red with some slight bits of green that will poke a little occasional on him. And that's because, you know, they are blenders. They like to hide. It took a while to get him to actually stick to that base. It took a lot of time for me to figure it out so it wouldn't move or anything. Um, let's see here. And on top of that, for the newest miniatures, I actually repainted one of my older minis. This is on my Bardis miniature that I was originally using for Bardis. But as some of you know, and I said in one of my or earlier videos, I used a 3D printed Bardis. I'm probably going to go back to using this Bardis because I love the weight from the metal and he's a little easier to slide across the board. And after repainting him, versing my old one, now I'm not going to say my old paint job wasn't great on him. But I am going to say I do like this newer paint job. Plus, I also use some green stuff to give him a nice tail. So he's now a fully Tybaxiized Bardis. You can see here the little girls there. Um, and now moving on from those type of miniatures, we're going to go to minis that are not from the... And that's going to be actually all we're doing today for like that wave of miniatures. I will be doing another video on other projects, so stay tuned. This is only part one of my painting progress because this is all the stuff from the newest wave of unpainteds. But stay tuned, guys, and I'll be doing more videos. Bye-bye.